All right, guys, this is part three of Behind the Scenes Manifold Build Series. Let's talk about how we got here. All right, so we've got the runners in. Uh, we got them all cut to size. Uh, we've got them tacked on so we could make planums and CAD the actual top rims for both of these. So I'm gonna show you uh, how we went through actually cutting them. And I'm gonna show you how we established planum volume and our angles as well. So let's get into that part now. So here guys, we've cut these now on a five and a half degree angle. That gives us a pitch up from the port center line of about 1.5 degrees so it's not a lot at all but it's just going to be enough to get us a little bit more runner length in and to stop that cross signaling um, i'll get them tacked on and then i'll show you what i mean well there it is all laid up guys just tacked on so you can see that angle we've come up on on the runners itself We've got nice separation, almost two inches between the runners now. And I've offset the runners to the outside because these are going to be running too big. So you can see the taper is that way. Uh, with a carburetor would go opposite, but being EFI, we were able to separate them more and reduce even more cross torque between runners. So there it is. All right, guys, so we're doing planum volume now, just working the math out now that we have our runners laid up. This is the Ford uh, 655 cubic inch um, with the Blue Thunder head. So we've done a little template to see where we're at because we've got to play with this height here and play with the width as well. Uh, there's a few little tricks you can do, but I'll just show you roughly what we've done. So we just use a test strip. Uh, we measure our angles, the width between the cylinders. We've set all this now. Uh, and now we've got a rough template um, of sort of our minimal distances, how how we would like to run it. Again, this is carby, so the carby is going to be sitting basically here. We have our minimal uh, distance as far as carby goes. So I try and do the planum as small as I can relative to the RPM that it's doing. That way we can always add some because if we put too much planum volume into it, the engine will be doughy between gears. It can lean out and have all sorts of drama. So uh, with this one, we're gonna target around that 75% planum volume. Again, we talked about this in the videos. With the tunnel rams, we want an as least amount of planum volume as possible without robbing cylinders and going off what this is uh, we're going to be shooting for around that 500 cubes because uh, it's a 655 cube so i'll show you a quick way to just do the math on the planum we do this in cad but um, how i show anyone that i'm training is basically just lay it on some paper 
uh, or trace around the planum and just break it up into rectangles and triangles with the two triangles become a square anyway or that, that's actually a rectangle anyway. So we're just going to add up um, A, B and C. So rather than working the area out of a triangle and halving it, because we have two triangles that are equal, we'll just work that rectangle out. So that'll give us 8,000 square millimetres for the top, uh, B, um, 4,128, and C, 5,000. So that adds up to 17,669.35. And we're going to times that by the length of the planum. The length of the planum is going to be seven, uh, sorry, seven, 470 millimetres. That gives us a total CC of 8,305 cc's or 8.305 litres. So we're just going to go into the Einstein app now, convert that into cubic inches because I can't do it in my head. All right, so we're in the uh, free bronze calculators. We're just going to go down to engine conversions. I've got them all in here. Um, horsepower to kilowatt, weight, so pounds to kilograms, pressure, bar, KPA, inches of mercury. So cubic plates displacement. So CCs, we have 8,305. Um, so it gives 8.3 litres, obviously, uh, and 506 cubic inches. So now all we're going to do is just divide the, um, the engine cubes or well, actually we're going to divide um, the volume we've got now into, so 503 was it? No, 506. 506 divided by 655. No, sorry, 655. There's the dyslexia. All right, so that gives us 77%. All right, so there we go. So that works out at 77%. That's probably where I want to be considering the angles and everything that comes up. We've got a, a really good spread here. Um, we're going to have 4150s over that. So they're not too bad, as you can see. We've set the runners. Uh, as I showed you in the CAD, I offset this CSA to that CSA and gave it a, a straight wall. So that way... I could just alternate the runners. So you can see the inside wall comes this way and the inside wall comes that way. That gets me a better spread. We've done the opposite on the EFI big block because they're already too close. That gives us our inch and a half and we're about um, two and a bit inches there. A little wide in the center, but not too bad. So it's not a bad shot. And with the height, we should be pretty good. We're, we're going to be um, relative to the center line of the runner, we're going to be about three and a half inches to the bottom of the carby at that 77%. Uh, again, when we talked about this in the videos with a lot of the street stuff, I'll start at about 60%. Again, like planum volume, it can work against you, especially with carburetted. Um, it's all about the signal strength. So we want to keep it as small as possible without robbing the cylinders too much. And the way we've laid the cylinders out here, we've got a really, really good spread. There's not going to be a lot of cross talk. Um, they, they've got good angles. They've got good balance as far as separation goes under each carby. So we're going to have really, really good line of sight here. So we don't need a lot of planum. So I'm going to start this and leave that probably at that 75, 77%. I think that's a really, really good target. And then we can always add from there. The problem is if you put too much in, you can't put planum spaces in them. And that becomes the drama. So uh, we're going to work on that 77%, 75% around there. Uh, it's probably going to end up at about 78 being realistic once we put the rim because the rim will go another 3 mil on that. So uh, if we can keep it under that 80%, I think it's going to be uh, on the money. That way we can always add a little bit more if we need it. But um, like I said, you can't take it out unless you cut the, the rim off and um, it just becomes a nightmare. And also we're going to instep the ends. So a lot of people ask me why I don't just put a parallel end in it. I like the refraction di di distance on all the runners to be the same. So if I run a parallel plate across the end of the planum, uh, the distance from here, I, I usually allow about 20 millimeters from the radius. So if I've got 20 mil here uh, and this offset is 
22 mil, I think, on these, 21 mil. Then I'm going to be 41, 42 mil here. So the refraction distance between this runner and this runner to this wall is going to be different. So that's why I'm going to, I always instep my front and back planums. So the distance on all of these runners is exactly the same. All right, guys, on to the next step. All right, guys, so we've got them all welded up, and now we're going to sit our planums on, mark them up, and I'm going to do the CAD uh, for the top plate. So we're going to establish where we want the carbies and throttle bodies, and I'm going to draw the rims up now. But the reason why I weld the runners up, and I thought I'd explain this quickly, is because they are gonna move slightly, you know, what one to two millimeters, they might move around and, and it actually settles. So this is why we tend to weld these in place first and then we can sit our planum on, scribe around, we know exactly where the windows are for the planum itself. Uh, we've tried before doing them in more of a cookie cutter way uh, where we have the plates stamped out before they fold. Uh, there's a few problems that come into that, obviously, is the stress of the aluminium. When the window's close, it doesn't fold properly uh, and, and they don't weld as good. This way takes a little bit longer, but you get a far better result in the end with, with the manifold. So now there's no stress in the planum. We can fold the planum. We can sit it on. It's all de-stressed. We can mark the windows, cut the windows out. And now when we sit it on, we can just match port them as close as we can because the better the fitment, the better the weld, the better the job. So, all right, let's CAD this up.